Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about defaults based on ISO. Hi folks, it's Lightroom Tuesday, so yeah, I know I'm going to be doing Lightroom Tuesdays. I promise I will have bonus videos and start to get back to do more stuff soon. It's all in the plan, but just have so much stuff on that I'm trying to get stuff done. I'm not actually here, it's not actually Tuesday. Um, I'm currently in the middle of the Lake District in England shooting landscapes and hopefully flying the drone. We shall see. But I'm going to jump in, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to talk about a useful little feature of Lightroom that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, this came up in groups, Facebook groups during the week, and so this is my reply, uh, but I'm doing it now in video form as well. Right, so here we have some concert shots of, of a band called Light, actually is what it is. And I've shot stuff at various different um, ISO speeds throughout. Uh, so like there's a bunch of the concert stuff is shot at ISA 100, it looks fine, and 1600 looks fine and stuff like that. All right, but I'm specifically going for 2500 here. So what I want to do is I want to get some settings that automatically apply every time I bring something in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab an image here. I may as well grab one of the ones that I've already kind of given a one star to in the past. I like the action and emotion here with this, okay? It's reasonably sharp in the face area, which is good. But if we look across here, we can see that it's quite noisy. So I'm gonna go into develop. And just go away from my, turn off the presets for a second. So we have way more to see. So now I'm going to, uh, this jump into HSL is actually, if you have a loop deck, you've probably noticed that it keeps opening HSL no matter what else was open. There has been some discussion about that, and they are supposed to be doing something about it. So now, with noise reduction here, we're really trying to get rid of this mottled effect here now. So like the color noise is reasonably under control, but I might be tempted to bring up the smoothness, which brings up, gets rid of like blocky areas of color and so that way the color becomes a little bit more even and the other thing we want to do is use luminance to blur out some of these little kind of if we just zoom in for a second you see a little better see these kind of no that's noise here and that's because it's at 2500 so i'm going to put way too much luminance on for a second right here we can see what's going on right we can see that's completely blurred and gotten rid of it but obviously it's also completely blurred the face which is absolutely no good to us at all so i'm going to bring it back substantially Okay, so we're kind of compromising between the two. We still we still have lost detail in the face. So what we can do is bring up contrast and detail. The other thing that we will need to do is add a little bit of sharpening as well to that. So. Now when we turn off detail to make a before comparison, it'll also add back in color noise. So you're comparing the sharpness here to the sharpness after as well that's what we're doing to make sure that we're not losing too much sharpness All right. and we can see that we have reduced the noise significantly at that so let's say that we're happy with that and we want to use this look on every image that shot is ISO 2500 well you can do that now the thing about this is um, it uses a thing called set default and when you do do this it'll only work for this ISO. You're only setting up the defaults for this ISO. Now the only thing we've worked with here is detail. So everything that's inside uh, develop is gonna actually get applied. So Adobe color will get applied and stuff like that. So let's say I always wanted to have these come in with um, a classic Chrome look. Um, I can do that as well. Oh, that's a bit useful for this kind of look because concerts are generally a bit more vivid. And um, so to have these show up and every time I bring in, what you need to do is you need to go to Lightroom preferences right, and then in presets you need to turn on this option here which is make defaults specific to ISO camera setting you can also make the default specific to the camera serial number so it'll only happen if you're using a particular camera as well so I'm going to make specific to ISO settings and now I'm going to hold down the alter option key and if you look here you'll see that, that the word reset turns into set default if I click that it'll come up here and it says Change the develop settings used by Lightroom and Camera Raw for negative files with the following properties. The X-T2, now that's just 
the XC2 range of cameras, not a specific one. If it was a specific one, you'd actually have the serial number. And then the ISO speed rating of ISO 2500. So I click update to current settings. It'll take everything that's here. And then in future, everything I bring in at ISO 2500, it will apply this noise reduction to. Now, it says, please note that these changes are not undoable. So this writes it into the catalog. So if you click update to current settings, now every time I bring in an image that as ISO 2500, it will have this look. So that way you've got some of that work done to try and get it back to where you want it to be. All right. Now, Sean, what if I want to do this at another ISO? Well, then you have to do this for each individual ISO that you want it to happen at because you've separated that like that. So that's all of the third stop ones as well. Okay. So it may be just that you intentionally shoot at ISO 1600 or ISO 3200 and you set up for those ones uh, and then you don't bother with the inter intervening ones. You just use your aperture and your shutter speed to get the exposure you want, just that set ISO values. Um, now, let's say you're in a situation whereby you're sorry that you think you could be better in the future, but what you need to do is you need to hold down the Alt, op alt or Option again and click Set Default again. And you go restore Adobe default settings. And now it'll go back to the way it was before you actually applied it. So that's just to let you know you can do that. Now, if I had some ISO 2500 files on hand to import, I could do it and you can see it coming in. But it is that straightforward that you can see it straight away. So folks, hopefully you found that useful. If you are shooting stuff that uses high ISO, or like interiors for weddings or concerts and stuff like that, it's a good idea to set these. If you're not happy with the defaults, uh, it just helps you get to where you're going faster. So like the video, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and of course subscribe and hit the notification bell and all that kind of stuff, folks. I hopefully am taking beautiful pictures in the lakes right now, and I will see you next week.